Hey you guys, it's viewers, Ginger Geek here, once again as always, joined by... Big G Jamie, hey guys! And we are here with yet another episode of Video Game Movie Madness. Now, we've got past the beat-em-ups of the 90s, but still in the 90s we've moved on to the realm of Space Sim. Passing Mortal Kombat in our last episode, a particular low point for us. Yeah. <laughs> this oh, I'd forgotten about it. Why would you... Uh, flashbacks. Uh, um, you know, this, this this wasn't worse, I don't think. No, nah, I would... I would oh, spoilers! <laughs> God! <laughs> well, no, because you still don't know where it's going to rank. That's a fair Just point. Just not bottom. Not bottom. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty obvious nothing's going to be bottom for a while. Like, uh, Hopefully! <laughs> um, so, yeah, this was the first one we were both going into completely blind. Um, you were completely unfamiliar with the Wing Commander series, am I correct? Completely, yes. Yeah. Uh, I had an awareness of it. But only in the sense that I wasn't allowed to play it because my older brother was kind of a dick. Oh um, <laughs> no no no! He did this really. He did this really cool. He always used to do this 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 thing um, where looking back, I'm like, oh, you little shit! At <laughs> the time I just believed him. Uh -huh. um, he used to do a thing where he persuade us into getting games that he was more interested in, but his games I, I always couldn't play for reasons, right. and the reasons would always be particular to the game. So one time I see him playing Wing Commander on PC and like me being a kid I see like the Kilrathi which are like lion people and I'm like that looks cool yeah, yeah. there's lion people that's awesome yeah. can I play this no 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 it's really violent and um, I was like how is it violent I'm, you're literally flying a spaceship no 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 because it's like it's like there's like um, this thing um, where like when you blow up the ship you like see the people like blow up inside and I remember thinking as a kid that's weirdly specific of them to do that but never <laughs> question it like, like I always went on the logic of like every time you blew up a ship in Wing Commander it would just suddenly cut to a cutscene of the inside and all the civilians <laughs> just like <Jeez>. dying <laughs> and he told my mother this and my mum wouldn't let me play it wow um, but I did occasionally sneak a peek at it and then proceeded to forget about it apart from the fact that I had cool lines in so I only came into the Wing Commander franchise much much later and at that point um, it's, it, I, I recognise it was like a, a very influential space sim um, and it has actually aged very well but I'm kind of out of the loop for mm. playing it you know what I mean Fair. Um, I've dabbled it's pretty good um, particularly um, like I'm, I, I was quite interested the, the sprite art on the originals was very good very impressive um well ahead of its time and then when it got to the more um advanced stuff and started including fmvs like still to this day i'm kind of impressed by the fmv stuff they got a really good lineup of actors you know you got mark hamill john yeah. reese davies mm. okay, and for the movie you got freddie prince jr <laughs> and matthew L Lilla? I want to say Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Yeah, yeah, Shaggy, who <laughs> we'll probably be referring to him as throughout this entire <laughs> review. He's called Matthew something, but yeah. we'll just go Shaggy. Shaggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Freddie so Prince Jr. So you know, Jr. they're on the same level. Has no iconic characters to name him after, so he is Freddie Prince Jr. Yeah. But he is playing Christopher Blair, taking on the role from Mark Hamill, who played it in the games. Mm. Um, oh, God, that's a step down. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I don't know what the logic was, because. Like, they must have looked at Mark Hamill and went, nah, he can't lead a movie. He's never done that before. <laughs> you know who we need? That kid from I Know What You Did Last Summer. There's, there's gold there. There's a there's a space lead. <laughs> Mark Hamill? Space? Nah. <laughs> nah. nah. What sort of iconic role might he have in space? <laughs> so, yep. Yeah, um, this movie was actually directed by creator of the games yeah Chris Roberts Chris Roberts yeah um, which is kind of amazing really um, because you'd think oh well he can't possibly fuck it up yeah because you know presumably he did all the FMVs and the, yeah, the yeah, really he heavy would, you know he's wrote all the law he's going to be very faithful to the adapt he's going to be a very faithful adaptation continuing the narrative of a game franchise that's much loved yeah you think well, what? It didn't happen like that yeah. um, so let's go into so the let's reasons start, as to let's why. start the movie at this point well, start off, um, now I, like I said, uh, has already been established, went into this blind, didn't really know what Wing Commander was, I assumed, you know, it was a space game because because of, uh, you know, the name, but then these opening credits, I don't know about you, but my initial thought was just like, is this a horror movie? Thriller, I thought. Yeah, <laughs> like, that was my immediate thought. Because it's, it's like, the, the the lines and stuff, like, the very, like, and then like, the yeah, quote yeah. from John F. Kennedy. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> like, I was a bit weird, like, we eventually... 
Like, if, like the opening credits eventually, to, in my opinion anyway, start getting a little cool. Space as, up. Yeah, get a, get a bit more spacey as we have, uh, as, as was stated, uh, John F. Kennedy's speech about the space race over visuals of space charts. And once the space charts start kicking in, it's like, oh, oh, that's oh, space. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't mind these opening credits. The, okay, I know that, that, like, I mean, it's three minutes of exposition. Yeah, yeah, we get, like, well, after John F. Kennedy, we get, like, fake news audio about mankind's space achievements, like, the development of faster than light travel, first contact with the Kilrafi, and then the war with the Kilrafi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, the Kilrathi being the, the villains in this piece. And mm. obviously in the in the games, they were the lion people I was referring to before, which got me so interested in yeah, the series yeah, as yeah. a child. Because um, they looked cool. Like, mm. they kind of look, like, silly now, but, like, they do look great. Like, the practical effects and stuff. There's just... They're, they're so much fun. Um, but, yeah, opening credits, pretty promising um, in the sense that this is the first one I can see... Like, even though, you know, with, there's been better films on this list, apart from maybe Mortal Kombat, um, and we're not going Mortal Kombat 2 because they had the exact same opening credits, that immediately looks like a film. Yeah, yeah, actually. Because, like, Double Dragons was, like, really choppy-looking CG on the back of the mm, medallion and stuff. Yeah. This looks The less like... said about Super Mario Brothers, the better. Yeah, exactly. Um... Fucking dinosaurs. <laughs> Still not over it. Um, <laughs> I'd forgotten um, Brooklyn dinosaurs. Brooklyn dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, this one. But this looks like a movie. This is this is quite like it's cinematic. Like mm. I know, I know. If, if this was on a different movie, like if this was the opening to a sci-fi space film, now mm. I wouldn't buy an eyelid. Yeah, yeah. Which is something to be said because generally they go in right and just dash your expectations immediately yeah yeah they really do yeah but um, uh, not this time they actually got them a bit raised so let's talk about why the rest of the film doesn't live up to it <laughs> yeah yeah we have an establishing shot of the uh of as as the little little thing at the bottom tells you the vega fleet headquarters pegasus asteroid base Earth, earth time. time. Earth time oh, yes, yes, it's yes. on earth time yeah. which i always love as a sci-fi trope because yeah. it's like this is sci-fi because we have to specify that earth is like a thing that we don't just automatically consider home. Yeah, yeah. We're we're in Earth year um, twenty six fifty four as well. So uh, sorry guys, but presumably anybody listening to this, you ain't you ain't getting this anytime soon. Mm-hmm. And and March fifteenth, which probably won't happen, but I like to like that maybe we'll release this on March fifteenth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We um, um, the uh, thing I noticed as well mm. um, that opening establishment shot looks kind of great. Mm. Like, show, show, showing off the effects budgets a bit of the, of the yeah movie. like the, again to, to make another comparison this is the first of the movies so far that I can see oh well I can see where the money's gone yeah yeah I mean this to give a comparison budget to this movie 30 million dollars that was the same budget as Mortal Kombat Annihilation yeah and, and if we compare these if we put two screens up like side by side right now holy fucking Christ yeah yeah because you've got you've got you've got like you know the I mean Either some bits of it will point out later, look choppy, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you immediately right got that nice opening establishing shot, mm. and then you look at Mortal Kombat Annihilation, and yeah. you've got the set with the glacier with Scorpion Sub Zero are fighting so on it. So bad, yeah. Although, um, although uh, that 30 million unfortunately didn't help it much in the box office, as this made 11 million. Yeah, it was a bomb. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Speaking uh, of bombs, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, speaking that's of right. bombs, we have a segue. Bomb <laughs> and, and this is where the movie gets like bad to the point of hilarity for yeah. me anyways because this is the most casual <laughs> slow yeah, yeah, yeah. like dull bombing I've ever seen they're just all of these ships bomber headquarters yeah. and they just kind of like drift over it and it's just a really really slow tracking shot like like you know like in Saving Private Ryan or like Star Wars to make a better comparison when there's like the little bit like big space battles and like twist the camera around as it falls a spaceship and jumps over and stuff or like there'll be like a big explosion and everybody will jump here it's just like I'm gonna <laughs> some stuff and then I'll go home it's just like really casual like yeah, yeah, yeah. literally like I expect all the pilots it's to just be janitors yeah because yeah. like, they're literally going about their daily business like yeah. you know like I want them to be whistling you know <laughs> just as they're like just dropping bombs and killing all these people yeah, and then inside same sort of thing you get a bit faster movement but it's yeah. like 
one tracking shot without any freneticism. Like, there are literally people walking around. Mm, like, yeah, bombs yeah. are going off and people are just like, so, uh, what's, what's going on? Like, yeah. um, it's, it's, they can literally look out the window, there's green explosions and shit everywhere, things are falling off and they're just pretty chill, pretty yeah, relaxed. Most, about most people are just, just standing around. Like, mm. nobody, nobody seems to be panicking whatsoever. It's a, it's a weird, it's a really weird sort of scene there's no urgency to it yeah, we're getting, you, don't, you don't really get any sense of dread we'll get um, a very very small glimpse of our villains of the kill Rafi. yeah there's a very small glimpse like a couple of frames yeah um, uh, and they figure that they're here for um, a navcom which I will be referring um, as the space car battery for the rest of the review yeah um, they try to destroy it um, it self destructs but the, like it malfunctions so then uh, captain of the ship tries to blow it up with a gun, but apparently forgetting that there's bulletproof glass in front of it. <laughs> that's, that's pretty moronic. Like, yeah, pretty kind of fucking cause, stupid. Because right? all that, like, the only thing you could do in that scenario is yeah. maybe ricochet the bullet back into your own people. I was gonna say that's, <laughs> that's pretty bad. Um, you'd think like the guy in charge of the station would know the MacGuffin is protected. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, yeah. so the, the the they decide to um, send an encrypted message to um basically the, the 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 guys they needed to pass on the navcom to originally um to say station's been breached want navcom yeah, 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 yeah shit yeah. just 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 so we're clear as to why this navcom is um important because to be honest it's not immediately apparent no, <laughs> it's it's i had to work it out yeah yeah we essentially the space car battery is just a map yeah, yeah. Um, the Kilrathi don't know where Earth is. Yeah, which makes it's... sense if you you know can, if you like go on the logic of like oh well the universe is massively expanding and this is so far in the future that like there are literally like people in Rome like other oh, solar systems yeah, just cruising yeah. around. But that's a dumb plot point. Yeah, like yeah. oh I forgot where Earth is. Like I realised I haven't been there before, but it's still it just it's, sounds silly. It's like <laughs> you know, and the fact that they've got Navcom like real like hidden behind glass. Yeah, that's just. Essentially a GPS with a home function. Man, yeah. <laughs> like, I really hope, because we don't ever get to see the Navcom function, but I really, I really hope it's the exact same as GPS. Yeah, literally it's like, like it's just a voice. Turn left at the Milky Way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really hope it's that. But we get, we get the, um, uh, we get the uh, tension, massive fucking sarcastic quotation marks mm. over that, where the big fleet is... 42 hours away from Earth, but the Kilrafi are 40 hours away. <gasps> In that two hours, we hear the Earth will already be beyond repair. <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what it amuses yeah, me? Because obviously what happens next is they give the, um, the, they give the message to a, a, a pilot who's just kind of kicking about and yeah, 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 being yeah, the main character. And like, pass on this message. It's mm. like, well, hang on. The emailed it to you. Can they not just email it to like these these guys that are forty hours away? Like I'm assuming in the future there's not like a range limit on like digital data transmissions. No, 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 because it's out of the yeah, no, because apparently we get, is. we get that line that out of range of their communications, and apparently it would take two days to get a drone to the ship because the uh, we're, we're now in the main fleet's sort of um, headquarters, and they're like, shit, we can't get to Earth. Um, we can get to Earth in 40 hours, the 42 hours, and um, Kilrathi can get there in 40. Crap, we need to slow him down. It's like, oh, who's kicking about? It's like, ah, oh, there's a sort of army over there that's, that can intercept the Kilrathi. Sweet, we need to get a message to them, get them to slow down the uh, the Kilrathi fleet uh, while we, while we, you know, speed to Earth as quickly as we can. And yeah, and, and but the ship that they need to get that to is just out of their communications range. It's like it's it's so let's so oh, futuristic. Do the our uh, uh, na, na, na signal, mate. Now nah, I can't. Yeah, yeah. I can't get over Actually, there. Actually, no. To, to be fair, to be fair, maybe this is exactly how shit's going. Now yeah. Because yeah. as smartphones are getting better. My signal's getting worse. I don't know about yeah, you. Yeah, actually. It's a very valid point. Extrapolating that signal will be shit in the future. Yeah. Guys, I'm sorry. Well, and again, and as a side point, as we've established here, that the um, like the Earth. It's it's got defenses as we learn later, but it is essentially undefended. Like there isn't a, like a big space army there. Why? <laughs> it's, why the fuck is Earth undefended? Why is there not just a small army kicking around that might 
might like protect against these things. It's just it's... putting it out here, but like, I, I, don't, I don't get why they actually need it to defend Earth. Like, they're clearly all living on That's a valid point as well. away yeah, from it. Like, yeah. um, I mean, yeah, I assume there's obviously an entire civilization still on Earth, but like, clearly, like, but they're, they're all yeah, perfectly yeah. fine they chill are, in they space are absolutely... and like advanced civilizations yeah, and can yeah. go to any planet they want. They've probably, like, in my mind, looking at this, I would have made the assumption until they said, oh shit, we need to protect Earth. They've all left Earth. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Earth's a long gone thing of the past. Yeah, I would, I would, I, I was under that was the second word I was about to make that. Yeah, if, if Earth isn't unimportant in the you know universal grand scheme of things by now, fucking our global warmer must have destroyed it by now yeah, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, we we figure out that the only ship that's near the Kilrathi fleet and in communication range is the Diligent, uh, captained by James Taggart. It's transporting two... Rep- <laughs> James, Taggart. James Taggart. Um, <laughs> James Paladin Taggart. Um, I'll, get, I'll get onto these fucking... Uh, the the the, uh, the code names later. But, um, but it's transporting two replacement pilots to the fleet ship called the Tiger's Claw. Um, First Lieutenant Christopher Blair, um, being Fre- main character. Uh, Freddie Prince Jr., and First Lieutenant Todd Shaggy Marshall. Uh, <laughs> 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 Which so, right, um, right, just, 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 just bear in mind, okay? Then you know this is directed by uh, Christopher, Chris, Chris Roberts, Chris, Christopher, yeah, Chris Roberts, Christopher yeah. Blair. Is I know yeah. that's confusing. Yeah, yeah, actually, Christopher, actually, yeah, I, <laughs> the guy hey, who wrote. Hey, 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 Roberts, Chris Roberts, did you put self in certain character as the main <laughs> character in all of your games? And yeah. wasn't even subtle about the naming convention. And, <laughs> and had him played by Mark Hamill. Yeah, <laughs> this point doesn't need to be explored, but I'm now curious. I'm, I, 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 that's like me writing a movie and just being like. Yeah, the main character's name's Daniel, and he's played by Samuel L. Jackson. Because <laughs> he's cool. Um, although, seriously, like, he must have gone through some self-esteem issues where he was like, I'm not worth Mark Hamill. Aww, <laughs> I'm going to recast myself as... Who, who could I be? I, Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> I could be Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose he married Buffy, though. Yeah, actually. Yeah, the, he's yeah. got that going for him. He, he does. Um, but anyway, so Christopher Blair... Played by Freddie Prince Jr., main character of the uh, Wing Commander games. Yes, the yeah, games had FMV sequences, which were all full of like live action act, as in, as I mentioned before. They had some quite big names, and for some reason, Mark Hamill was recast as Freddie Prince Jr. Hmm. I, <laughs> unfathomable decision, yeah, uh, to say bit. the least. Because um, not only like is that like a Massive step down in terms of acting, also in terms of like nerd credibility, also in terms of, <laughs> yeah. of draw. You yeah, know, people yeah, would go yeah. see a Mark Hamill film, a space film with Mark Hamill as the lead over a Freddie Prince Jr. film. I'm pretty sure, you know, mm. there was that little thing called Star Wars that was kind of a bit of a cult thing. I just don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the one the Daily Mail always compares things to. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> Speaking of, should we play that now? Just because we brought it up? Yeah, fuck it, we'll play okay. that now. Go right, on, and then I'll, I'll come back to my point. Yeah, yeah. So, Jamie. Yes. If the Daily Mail were to describe the sci fi epic that is. <laughs> when, <laughs> that, that's like, uh, you could, I, could, I couldn't see the truth. Yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, that is Wing Commander the movie. Mm. What, what would they compare it to? Well, well, it's a cheat, but I have two here. Seriously, like, if they did compare it, they'd say it was like Star Wars, because <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's trying so hard yeah. to be Star Wars, and it's not and, even and, funny. And they'd say it was like a cross between Star Wars, Starship Troopers, um, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and Top Gun, because of the battle scenes. Mm, like yeah, yeah, like yeah. that is like that uh, there's actually some there's actually some that makes it very much like Starship Troopers because it uses a trope that Starship Troopers uses but I point out I put that yeah that's, that's sort of a serious one but um in more in line with the video game movie madness it's it's like a it's like a um mix between Star Wars obviously uh, Star Wars yes because um, everything's Star Wars yeah pretty woman uh, <laughs> because of the just passionate love uh, and relationship um, drama that we get later Oh god, they're terrible. And <laughs> um, small soldiers, because the Kill Raffi just all look like the leader of the Gorgonites, Archer. <laughs> yeah, so I do. So I do. Oh man, I just thought, you know, how everything Star Wars. Yeah. I'm trying to think back to the episode now, off the top of my head. Double Dragon. Did we see it was like Star Wars? Uh, no, shit. No, I don't think we did because I because I described it like uh, Mad Max: The Raid and the Hulk. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. We totally forgot. This is well retconned. This Red, is like retconned. Five retconned. Right. Okay, <laughs> so it's still like Mad Max, um, the Hulk, and, and the, the Raid. Raid. Yeah, but it's also like Star Wars. Yeah. Um, 
because there's that scene where the stumble into that wretched hive of scum and villainy. Hey! Which is full of mimes and shit. Anyways, Boom, right, back on focus, back on point. Okay, so, <laughs> Wing Commander. Yeah, right. uh, 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 get, getting back to the plot, getting mm. back to the plot. Um, Ad- Admiral uh, Tolwyn, um, who is the uh, uh, Admiral of the, of the fleet, um, who is racing towards Earth to save it, saves it, get in contact with the Diligent and in Blair and says, Blair, hand deliver this encrypted message to the captain of the Tiger, Tiger Claw. Um, Pass this shit on, brother. Yeah, like it's yeah. a game of Chinese whispers for your life. They're exactly... <laughs> That's, that is exactly the, the, the undertone. Um, also, just as an aside, Blair um, is shit at being in the military because in the space of about 40 seconds, he questions the uh, Admiral twice. <laughs> There's like seven that. ranks. And when I say like, I mean literally. There are seven yeah. ranks. Because I looked this up. <laughs> there are seven ranks between a first lieutenant and an admiral. And, and he questioned him twice. It's like, you know, uh, well, unless you're like a CEO and you're listening to this, it's like, imagine if your boss's 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 boss walked in and asked you to do something. Would your first response be, and you knew who he was, would your first response be, shit, why are you asking me? Because <laughs> it wouldn't be mine. <laughs> Get fucked, mate. <laughs> like, what? Dan, tell me, boss. Like, pass it down the chain of command. Right? <laughs> didn't come to us. Didn't come to me. We are shit. Right? Pass it on to someone else. I'll deal with their shit. But I. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, the other the other casting um, at this point we should mention is Taggart. Death yeah, Taggart. Yes. Uh, originally in the games. Mm. Uh, thick. Thick accented Scotsman. Yeah. Played by uh, John Rhys Davies. Mm. Now French. <laughs> <laughs> and not played by anyone who re- who I recognise. And not John Rhys Davies. No. And Same. not anyone who looks like John Rhys Davies. Same name though. He's French. Yes. Ac- <laughs> He's a Frenchman called Taggart. <laughs> James Taggart. James Taggart. How French is that name? <laughs> like, uh, oh, oh. J- James, um, quite famously, is short for Jacques. Ah, <laughs> yeah, right, okay, I see. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, but, uh, so you couldn't, like, literally, there co- isn't a more Scottish name than Taggart. There's a BBC or ITV, I can't remember which one, series that's like 10 year long that literally is about a Scottish investigator and he's called Taggart. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like the only thing more Scottish than the name Taggart is literally kilts. Yeah, and that's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So I right, so Freddie Prince Jr., French Taggart, and Shaggy. Shaggy, yeah. Decide to walk into a bar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shaggy. And one uh, says to the other, "Do you want to make a terrible film? I can for it." <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So yeah. Has Freddie Prince Jr. ever been in a good film? Um. Because I don't know who the other guy is, but Matthew Lillard was in Scream. So he's been in one. Um, Scream's class, though. Scream's like worth ten films. And then Freddie Prince Jr. The seminal classic. I still know what you did last summer. (laughs) 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 Those those titles just got more and more fucking stupid, didn't they? I love them so much. I don't even know if he was in that one. I'm just assuming he was. Maybe he was definitely in the first. I wanted that to be a, just a continual line of movies, and when it got up to like the fiftieth instalment, and the like, the title was just <laughs> like a mate, paragraph. Like, like by the like fourth one, it's like, mate, three summers ago, that thing you did still fucking happened. <laughs> <laughs> like that's just the full title yeah, of the movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh god! So the tra- so travelling towards the Tiger Claw, and uh, the ca- Taggart takes a shortcut through like uncharted Beacon, space yeah yeah and the um <laughs> the, it's like it's a gravity well i think is the yeah reason. which is hilarious because he's going in the back and then they start to speed up yeah because shaggy's in the front being yeah. on pilot and he runs through he's like what the hell are you doing you <laughs> stone up scooby-doo loving twat and then exactly. he's like oh well i was just getting a bit faster you know yeah. what i mean like we can get there quick he's like we're approaching a black hole if we do it too fast we'll get sucked in not how black holes work <laughs> well, <laughs> gravity well Gra- uh, gravity yeah. well is the term they use yeah it's, again it's... i'm not sure that approaching a large mass of dense gravity slowly yeah. is any better than approaching fast know. i'm pretty sure it's the distance from that is determined yeah. i'm almost <laughs> thankful for the scene though for what you pointed out to me oh, as it's hilarious oh, isn't the it? acting yeah so <laughs> 
he says, "Oh, we're going to pro- we're going to get in the gravity well." Oh, right, I, I have to realign. You know, I have yeah. to realign. Otherwise, we're not going to make the jump. And then um, Shaggy says, "What happens if we miss?" Taggart replies with, "We die." And Shaggy <laughs> just kind of goes. Like, uh, look at the, the reaction. He, like, smiles. And then he's like, oh, no, shit. It's, it's <laughs> like he misheard him. It's like he went, what happens if we miss? Free fries. Free fries. Oh, no, we die. <laughs> oh. oh. That is a significant step down from free fries. Uh, I thought oh, I was going to get chips there. It's like, so <laughs> fucking stupid. Some vectors need to be inputted at the right time. And, uh, and, and type bubble. Yeah. Yeah, this sci- is, this sci- movie is level. full oh, of so techno bubble. bubble. It's like yeah. absolutely drenched in it. Yeah. It's, it like, it's enough to make Star Trek blush kind of yeah, levels. Yeah. But you get you get a fantastic bit where a tag it's like, ah, oh, our um, Blair, jump, jump in the pilot seat. Uh, I need to go do some stuff at the back. And uh, <laughs> Blair turns around with, oh, I've never made a jump before. He's a replacement pilot, <laughs> <laughs> and if to, if Shaggy is to be, to be believed, the second best pilot in the academy. Then may jump for. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ah, uh, so uh, oh oh oh, love this trope. Love pointing it out. Um, quick guys, we're making a jump. Ten seconds to jump. Twenty five seconds later, they jump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, my favorite trope. Uh, Blair is. Fucking space Jedi. Um, yeah, literally. Uh, yeah, well, I say literally. I mean, figuratively. Figuratively, literally. Fig- literally. Um, um, but yeah, he's, he's he's a pilgrim. He's a pilgrim, which uh, is Wing Commander's yeah, space we'll, Jedi. Yeah, we'll we'll get on the exposition for pilgrims later. But he's he's a space Jedi and like can like feel the gravity or some shit. I don't know. Anyway, he, he makes it through the jump, um, and they're they're safe. And it's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a really weird scene because it has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. Um, it's just sort of setting up. Uh, Blair as a, but you could do uh, that like in another pilot, way that's like yeah. actually relevant because it's, it's like it's well, like if the example it's like um, yeah. to give an example it's like we'll take the film Jaws mm. now the film Jaws is about them getting the shark yeah and but like if they just had to come across like get over some like completely unrelated hurdle in the first ten minutes so it's like oh there's a shark attacking yeah we should send some people out okay here's what people right we'll get to that shark. But we've just got to do this 50 meter, meter long jump first. Because like, <laughs> <laughs> it's really important. Um, and then there's like a bit of tension where they like almost feel a long jump, but then mm. succeed. And then they just fight a shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like gets it's, on with it. It's a little, it's a little, um, it's a, a little more, a little more relevant. Because I, I think they're setting up the, uh, the end of the movie where Blair, you know, uh, spoilers, guys. Um, where Blair? What? Um, <laughs> no. Where Blair jumps through the um, the the black hole gravity well thing to in front of the cool gravity black hole sun. Fle- the black hole, black hole sun. Uh, <laughs> the he jumps. He j- God damn it! <laughs> he jumps through that to in front of the cool gravity fleet to warn you know Admiral Tolwyn of it, and it's it's it. it it's kind of like the same thing as this, a little. I think I don't. It's not fully explained, and by fully, I mean it's not explained. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they go through the pole. They make the jump, uh, and they they end up um, at the Tiger Claw. Um, Blair. Well, they all go aboard, but we see a, we see a bit where a Blair um, gives the communication to the captain of the Tiger Claw. Um, He's hat stupid. Oh, oh, oh! Uh, <laughs> they just playing that out there. Yeah, yeah. his hat's really fucking stupid. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know what they're trying to go with in that Soviet Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Finish the four. <laughs> that's it. It just looks like a sort of USSR yeah, hat yeah, without yeah. the flaps. It really does. I don't know where they got the hats from. It looks ridiculous. In Soviet Russia. Freddy Prince Junior retasted as you. <laughs> <laughs> but Blair. Um, Blair completes um, the uh, level one quest, um, gives the communication to, <laughs> to Captain Sansky, um, 50 XP, um, <laughs> level up, you know, um, he's only he's only level one at this point. Uh, and and we have a filthy ping, fil- <laughs> appropriate, <laughs> because we get the introduction to Commander... Space uh, Nick Griffin. <laughs> Space Nick Griffin, exactly. Come on, <laughs> Commander Gerald. This scene is fucking hilarious, because it is the most awkward way to be racist... Ever the commander turns uh, to Blair and he's just like, "Oh, Blair, um, your dad isn't, you know, this Blair." It's like, "Yeah, yeah, it's my father." It's just like, "Oh, he married a uh, pilgrim woman, didn't he?" Just yeah, he did. 
pilgrims don't think like us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like them pilgrims. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like me saying, Dan, you've got you got a friend called Michael, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, Michael has a girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah, and that girlfriend is vaguely aware of pilgrims. Yeah. I don't like pilgrims, Dan. <laughs> they don't think like us. <laughs> just, I'm, just I'm watching you. <laughs> Oh, that is a loose connection, isn't it? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just... Space, Space Nick Griffin is the appropriate name for him, like, um... Because his, his logical stretch is, is pretty, pretty, uh, strenuous. Yeah, the uh, the captain seems to be a bit nicer, though. Um, of just, like, I'm pretty sure his hereditary isn't going to d- endanger his mission. He's still a pilot. Calm the fuck down, yeah. Nick. <laughs> um, then we have the, um, standard... Uh, uh, it's kind of a... Uh, quite often a sci-fi trope as well, but, like, mm. military trope of, like... Oh, I've just ticked off the boss. Yeah, yeah, like Mar- yeah. Marsh. Sorry, Marshall. Shaggy, Shaggy and Freddy. Um, <laughs> wonder. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes. I didn't mean Fred to do as well. that. Yeah. He actually plays Fred. Yeah, it's yeah. a Scooby Doo reunion. Yeah, Sh- Shaggy and Freddy wander about the uh, ship for a bit. Freddy gets into a random plane and um, gets his ego bruised by um, by 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 a um, the weirdest the pop weirdest, quiz I've yeah, ever seen. Yeah. It's like you're just like. Sitting there, um, like I don't, I, I don't know, it's like because she comes up and she's like, he's in the ship, and she comes up and she's like, it's just geeked. Oh, there's some fucking thing, a taxi from the side, um, clock's ticking. What do you do? Like just on the spot, yeah, and he's yeah. like, oh, and he, uh, he, he, he's, uh, yeah. he's pure Tony Hawk's, and he's like, I'd one eighty degree them, and yeah, um, yeah, go flip, flip over, flip thing, over just... and she's like, bang, you're dead, not fast enough. That's like me just going to you, you know, you're just playing, I don't know, Super Mario Brothers yeah, or yeah, what's yeah, yeah. like, Jimmy, Godzilla's attacking. What do you do? Yeah, uh, I got uh, too late. You're oh, dead, son. <laughs> It is the weird, <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. It yeah. happens like three times. Yeah, it's yeah. painful. It's like it's just Dan, Dan. You've got you got you're in a plane. Two Kilraffy ships on you. Mm. Yeah, you, you've got distance, but you're running low on fuel. But they're full, fully fueled. They're trying to lock onto you. What are you going to do? Tell them to get the fuck. You, they <laughs> they don't speak English. They shoot you down. You're dead. I don't think that was English anyway. That was more a, a Geordieism. They well, they speak English, so they don't understand <laughs> you. When you die. <laughs> but yes, like we say, it's this it's this trope. Where um, the woman that he ends up insulting is Lieutenant Commander um, G- Boss Woman Jeanette Devereaux, I think. Um, but is Blair's, Blair's wing Blair's wing commander name drop? Uh. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a bit of an awkward scene uh, where yeah he has to apologise. Um, Shaggy makes friends um, by being an obnoxious dickhead <laughs> and then bribing people with scotch, just like he did with the Scooby Gang. Yeah, yeah. Um, little un- unknown story as to how he got into that uh, corporation since he's actually you know terrified of his own job yeah yeah are we here it's meant that he was oh. like it totally say his side no but it's meant that he was such a good shaggy in the movie despite it being such a terrible movie that he is now shaggy full time yeah, in all the animated yeah, stuff yeah. actually that actually kind of is a nice little, nice yeah, little yeah. circle isn't it he, does, he has some talent with being. Oh, he's uh, good. He's yeah. good. Uh, like again, I think his name is Matthew Lillard. It's Matthew yeah, yeah. Summers. No, I think it's Matthew Lillard. But uh, he's, right. he's he's good. Like like he's class in Scream, and obviously he's a he's a min shaggy. Like he's he's got some talent. Mm. Um, also, bizarrely, him and Freddie have both done stuff for WWE. Just putting that out there. Like yeah, this yeah, is a proper yeah. little reunion. I mean, obviously, Shaggy has only done it because Scooby Doo meets WrestleMania was a thing. <laughs> Um, so he uh, voices that, and, you know. Oh, he's uh, amazing. Shaggy to when Shaggy will have a conversation with John Cena or whatever, and because um, that's the thing. But like Freddie Prince Jr. heavily involved. Um, there's there's Freddie Prince Jr.'s greatest role. What in the dream sequence with Vince McMahon? Holy, that was the thing that happened. Holy shit! Yes, spicy, spicy. <laughs> oh, that's that. Yeah. So that there is, you go. Freddie Prince amazing. Jr.'s finest role. He has been in something great. He has. <laughs> <laughs> There's a um Oh god that that is amazing. I don't want to go back to the plot to be honest. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. But back in the mo- movie uh, um Admiral Tolwyn uh we hear we hear the encrypted message and um the commander once again proves that his entire character is racist towards pilgrims. It's yeah, like, just, I hate pilgrims. Just like oh, the disc the disc came to us on a ship that had a pilgrim on it. <laughs> it's just, what the fuck? It's oh, just it's so minto. <laughs> It's like I love, I love like the idea of this character existing in the real world. Like, imagine you're just at a pub and you're like, "No, nah, I thought Ant Man was pretty good. I, I wasn't, I wasn't a fan of like the the setup for for this." And then the other guy's like, "Yeah, no, it, yeah, it's a pretty pretty strong and entering into the Marvel Cinematics universe." What do you think, mate? 
Hey, pilgrims. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the question. <laughs> well, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's so stupid. Oh, God. Well, you know what? Fuck it. Just because if not, I'm going to have to like point this out every <coughs> single time it gets on screen. Little little edit here to me or you, whoever's doing this. Just stick up some of some of like the commander's greatest hits here because literally about 50-60% of everything he says is just a weird link to him hating pilgrims. Mm. So here's a montage of racism for you. Pilgrims don't think like us. No one's jumped to Pulsar for 40 years and even then there were pilgrims. Angel, how sure are you that the Karathi had you targeted? Given the lieutenant's background, are you really that certain? Excuse me? It's well documented that pilgrim saboteurs have been responsible for much of the Confed's problems in this war. The disc came to us on the diligent, entrusted to a pilgrim half-breed. I still have a responsibility to this crew, Commodore. And excuse my bluntness, but if you think I'm going to let my men be flown into combat by a rogue and a half-breed, you're sadly mistaken. All right, back on the ship, um, there's some crew banter. You know, it's not exactly fucking alien, but it's, it's all right, I suppose. Like it, it, like ah, they're all they're all sitting. Starship around. Troopers is my go-to banter. Yeah, yeah. oh, oh, that fucking that is amazing. The banter bus is on. <laughs> it's a banter brigade up in that bitch. They are. They yeah. yeah Starship Trooper is is phenomenal for that. It's it's great. Um, uh, then we get a really really weird scene um, where Blair mentions that the reason he got in trouble with uh, the uh, with Devereux um, was because he sat in a um, a, a ship um, that belonged to Lieutenant Chen and everybody just freaks the fuck out because as we learn later the ship has a really weird thing where if somebody dies out here then everybody just pretends they never existed to make everybody feel better about it. But that's what I plan on doing when you had that. I don't know about any. <laughs> so when one of us dies, this channel just goes away because it's proof. Is that the... No, just any video with just, you. Just, just every video deleted. with me. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so this entire series just... just also, why, why... No, no, I'll just cut out all your... All your... <laughs> so it'll, just, it'll just be like this. Like, do you reckon... Ah yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh god, I'm, I'm. I mean, I hope I don't die, but it's good knowing that would be my legacy. <laughs> it's like it's like those. Your legacy um, will be the non-legacy. Yeah, yeah. No, it's because it's like those Garfield um, cartoons where Garfield Garfield's removed. Uh, yeah, yeah, Garfield yeah. without Garfield. Yeah, those yeah. Things are terrifying. Yeah, man. I know they're, they're existential terrifying, aren't they? Yeah. Were left, right, and center. So you'll be having that when uh, when I go, um, which which apparently I'm the one that's going, not you, for this reason. Um, yeah, screw you, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, if that's what was to happen, I would deny your existence. Well, I think it's a dumb way to grieve. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, uh, Captain um, Taggart. Um, French Captain James Paladin Taggart. Um, <laughs> God fucking damn it. It's like the uh, only way he could be like more Scottish without being Scottish is if like in like Brave 2... He's just Merida's daughter. Yeah. And Merida's son. Like, and yet oh, somehow yeah, yeah. he's French. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, quick scene <coughs> where uh, Admiral Tolwyn indulges uh, um, Nick Griffin, um, racist, and is like, yo, how do we know this encrypted message is uh, real? And Taggart's just like, I have this ring that belonged to Tolwyn. It's like, ah, all right then. <laughs> That's it. That's 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 a <laughs> yeah, little that's... little point out just you know to make it more like Star Wars. Yeah. There is actually a Star Wars cast member in here. Oh yeah, yeah. There Two, is. in fact, later on. Oh yeah, there's a there's there's a this guy um, from Episode One. Yep, that really memorable role whose name I don't even remember. Carrying on. Yeah. Uh, another kind of pointless scene. Uh, Shaggy comes in and is like, "Yo, Freddy." people are racist against pilgrims out here you, you said you'd take the cross off Freddy's like I know I said that nah mate though alright bro catch you later dude <laughs> there's a, there's a, that's a problem with this movie um, there's a lot of nothing in it yeah there's entire like half hour segments of nothing mm. like cause ultimately this this is the plot like summed up yeah kill Rafi bad people good kill Rafi Nick Matt to earth yeah People need to tell Earth kill Rafi on the way. Yep. Earth need to stop kill Rafi. Mm. That's it. Yep. Fuck me, does it go a long way about Tart. telling you that? Tart. There's like... so bad. Because uh, they have a lot of, like, 
pointless space battles. Did you notice that? Like, there's like that. There's like a bit like coming up actually, where they're just kind of like bump into the kill Rafi, kill some of them, and then like move on with the lives. It's mm-hmm. like what what are the odds that you would just bump into them and have like no consequences come of that? Like, you know, what I mean, like would the not they not be like oh we found these guys who are trying to race with earth do you want to like stop them first like back <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it's just like oh, it's just weird like everything just feels like a inconsequential series of events and then an ending yeah like it's like the setups are there at the start and then there's just like things happen and then the plot from the start's resolved that's mm. it yeah uh well like speaking of just pointless stuff happening for the sake of it um Shaggy and uh, I was a little dick here. Yeah, sh- sh- Shaggy and one of the uh, the people he was bantering on with, which we learn is he called Lieutenant uh, Rosie um, Forbes, uh, have a bit of a men, women, you know, men are better, name, woman, woman better, and then they break rules, endanger lives, and cre- uh, risk incredibly expensive equipment just to try and press it. That impress went other. too far there, like yeah, that they is... need some banty histamines. They do. <laughs> It's my favourite banter pun. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, but they 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 um they have some um flirt flirting. Yeah, he kind of rubs the forehead and yeah <laughs> yeah that's and oh, call, call yeah. him the maniac. Yeah, and that's his code name. He's 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 Todd Maniac Marshall. He's shaggy. Um, <laughs> uh, he is kind of fucking nuts. Like, oh. like on his weekends, he drives around in a van with like the dog that can talk and. Uh, Souls in the street with some, it's just, uh, <laughs> that's pretty fucking maniac to me yeah. um, we get a um, Forb, uh, For, uh, Forbes Devereaux scene where they just talk about Shaggy and how Forbes really wants to bang him um, I believe this entire scene was created specifically to tell the um, Betrayal test just to suck it suck it yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> to be fair if I were women in the presence of Shaggy, I'd be talking about how I wanted to bang Shaggy. That's understandable, actually. I'd probably, I'm... like, as a male, I'd probably do Shaggy. You know, just out of respect. He saved, he's, he's saved, you know, many a town. Yeah. From, I'd, from I'd, want, the, I'd, want, I'd want the story. Guys. Yeah. I'd, oh. I'd, I'd, I'd bang Shaggy. I shag Shaggy. I shag... Oh! <laughs> how did they not talk about him, in fact? On a shag rug. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, there's a mental image for you guys. Um, <laughs> we get we get Taggart um, and Freddy. Um, and we get and we get the exposition to the pilgrims. Uh, they're the first human explorers that explored so much they were rewarded with, and I quote, "the gift of flawless sense of direction." <laughs> that just so stupid. I know it's so <laughs> fucking that, like like we said they're space Jedi. They're just Jedi but for space travel. That's all. Uh, they, that's all they fucking so are. Stupid. Like, it's <laughs> it's so dumb. There's just so much. It's bad. like it's like of all the gifts to get. Yeah. It's like I give you the gift. Of always cooking toast just to the right temperature. <laughs> it's exactly. Like, so oh, I give you the gift of when you put on a blindfold, you'll always know where to pin the tail on the dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. It's, it's weird, just, isn't it? Flawless sense of direction. Oh, there's, a, there's a wonderful bit immediately after there where Taggart's just like they could feel magnetic fields created by quasars and black holes. Like navigate, no, negotiate like singularities and navigate not only the stars but space time itself. And I have always wondered where time lords have come from. Um, <laughs> so it's good that Wing Commander are doing a crossover here. Good stuff. Uh, oh, oh, and there's a phenomenal bit of fuck. Like you can hear the fucking clunk. Like right after Taggart says um, they can navigate not only the stars but space time itself. Fre- Freddy's just like, oh, like a Navcom AI. It's like the writer was like, we haven't mentioned that thing the Kawaki yeah. soul. <laughs> fuck. Just put it in, put it in, put it in. So... Pilgrims spent so much time exploring um, the stars that they lost touch with their heritage and they decided they were better than mankind. They abandoned their humanity to follow their destiny. And apparently that's why they're, ha- they're hated. That's why everybody's really racist. Because of racist. metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> like, they so- because they, of pure yeah. Yeah. hyperbole and phrases. Legend of Korra does a similar plot where you know tribe abandons the spiritual things, but like that actually makes sense because in that context the spirits are real and have very real effects on the world and everything around them. And mm. there's a big, like, um, there's a big sort of um, issue between the South and North tribe because this the one of them is very spiritual and one of them isn't. Yeah, and you know it makes sense. 
Um, this is just like, mm. oh, they said some stuff that sounded quite poetic. Gays. <laughs> yeah. It's also, just an aside, I realize we have to get this exposition because, like, we don't know what pilgrims are and why they're important. But, as as Freddy really gone his entire life not knowing this? Like, how old is he? How, how, how is this not meant to be mentioned before? Yeah, how has he never thought, like, oh, what's that pilgrim thing? You know, like my mum is. What was that all about? People have been kind of a dick to me about it. Should I? Should, nah, I don't really think it's. It's that that important. It's like a dude going like all the way through his life getting the 30s and going, wait a minute, I'm black? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this explains so much. <laughs> uh, anyway, they, they traveling, they, they're they following the core after they're traveling. Ah, tra- At this point, we could it's literally a- skip about half an hour of the movie because yeah. it's traveling. Yeah. It's like, it's, oh, it makes the Hobbit look fast paced. Mm. Although, although quick, quick bit that, I, that we'll point out really stupid fucking dumb uh, Matrix thing as they jump they jump oh, the oh it's so weird isn't yeah, it yeah. <laughs> they're, they're like oh it's hilarious it's, it's just so like, yeah they, that, are you on about the bit where it freezes time yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like, totally forgot about that I'm glad you remember because yeah. that is it's so friggin because it's really like because it's 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 bizarre and it's made more strange by the fact that it's kind of impressive in effect especially yeah, yeah. for the time it came out like but the transition into it's really awkward and yeah. then they're like then it looks amazing and then it like lasts like three seconds but it's so weird it's really weird it's so strange although it's- my favourite thing about the entire thing is Devereaux apparently busts her head open on Blair's shoulder <laughs> it's like yeah it's hilarious like they go back into it she like gently knocks up against um, like gently knocks up against uh, Freddy and then she's just bleeding aye but that's cause that's cause He's got angel wings under there. Oh, Buffy God, will always be God. an angel. God. <laughs> like, I hate that I enjoy that so much. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's so, destined. God damn it. Even, even outside of the show, she's uh, still technically banging an angel. Yeah. Um, a, a, pro- a, spoilers. A, appropriate, <laughs> appropriate as well, Dev- Devereaux's nickname. What's her nickname? Angel. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. The Daily Mail also compares this to Buffy and Angel. <laughs> Just put every fucking movie poster on the screen. <laughs> Literally everyone. Not not just the ones we listed. Every poster. Every poster. Ever exist. That's right. Have fun editing that down. Uh, well, I, I, I say things and then I go, I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Wait, All this, the time. This might like, be... for one one time I went, huh, let's watch every video game movie ever. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah, that was That'll it. be fun, Jamie. <laughs> it, I've had... Fun. I had fun riffing on them, but Mortal Kombat yeah. Annihilation was really oh, hard. That was pretty It different. was so hard to do it again. I know, I know. I'm get, I, I still wake up in a cold sweat every once Wing in a while. Wing Commander's kind of a clunk as well. Like, to be yeah. honest, right, it, um, I don't put this as worse than Mortal Kombat Annihilation, but this is the first one where it took us multiple times mm, to save yeah, 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 yeah. I couldn't do it in one go. I but, had to start, yeah. stop. It was pretty bad. I was the same. Um... I was I I like I got to a point, found an excuse to pause and make a note on the movie, and then was just like, I wonder what's I wonder what's going on on YouTube. Oh, I was procrastinating so yeah. much. I was like, like I had like YouTube open in another tab, and I was like, world's best back crack. Well, <laughs> obviously this needs my undivided attention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it helped though because yeah. I ended up making more videos for the channel. Like, hey, <laughs> hey like, fantastic. Uh, back. Ugh, I hate I hate having to say back to the plot. I don't want to. It's just. Ugh. They jumped to the Ulysses Corridor, which is where we saw the really shit Space Invaders bombing earlier. Um, <laughs> they they do a stealth reconnaissance mission, and then, like, Blair and Devro go, and... Uh, actually, you know what I am? The, the Ulysses Corridor, the uh, the shield, the um, the headquarters were called the Pegasus Base. You know what? I, I'm surprised they're acknowledging the, Pe- the um, Pegasus' existence, because it's dead. So it should never fucking exist, it, should yeah. it? Yes, yeah, stupid fucking Maybe they're not movie. referring to that Pegasus. Maybe they're just really big Yu-Gi-Oh fans. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they could be. Or, like, just myth- mythology buffs. I'm going to go with Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm going to go with Yu-Gi-Oh as well. So much better. That'd be great. You, you could argue that. it's not out by then, but we're all aware that this is set in the future. Yeah. And Yu-Gi-Oh is an ancient Egyptian time. Exactly. Yu-Gi-Oh transcends time. Literally, in fact, in some of the movies. Your, <laughs> your move. oh god Um. (laughs) 
Uh, so they, There's so little to say about this really movie that we're just managing is. to throw in reference to anything else ever. Oh, because it's so, so like, this is the problem. It's not the worst movie. In in ways, it kind of, like, at face value, looks like the best. The sets are nice. Um, you know, the, the, the it's got some big name actors, I guess. Um, but the sets are nice. And um, it looks like a space film. Like, it looks the part. It looks like a real film. But it's just shitloads of nothing. Mm. Like so much nothing. It goes on for ages. It's so it's so it's so bad. And then there's just scene after scene which is tedious as fuck to get through. I mean the next scene is terrible, bloody Blair and Devereux are back on the ship. They get bollocked a little bit because they, you know, the space mission, like they got caught or something, and then they're back on the ship and they have this just this clunk after fucking clunk exposition. Blair's just ah oh, no sorry Blair Freddy <laughs> Freddy ah oh, my family died in a war before he was five De- De- yeah and then Devro yeah my parents died in the same war and then there's suddenly a fucking romance between them because like Devro breaks up oh no me and Chen got too close and then he died I can't go like through that shit again there's, these fuckers have had like like maybe five conversations and then there's suddenly a bloody romance brewing between yeah, well, one of them fucking does, one of them does have a penis and one of them does have a vagina so Ugh. by law by 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 hollywood law yeah. <laughs> outside of outside of the um the the one exception that comes to my head there'll be more obviously but the one main exception that comes to my head which is mad max fury road Going from one d- romance yeah, this is, this to is another the starship, this is the starship troopers bit oh right? yeah you know one oh, of them oh. has to die now Sh- ah Sh- because, shaggy forbes yeah because the, yeah, Shaggy and Forbes are shagging. Yeah. <laughs> fun to see. Shaggy's having a shag. It's just great fun. Yeah. Um, so uh, Shaggy and Forbes are shagging, but you've still got now our movie left. So they can't be okay for <laughs> like, uh, the rest of it. Yeah, so yeah. one of them's got to die. Starship Troopers does the exact same thing to um, increase your allusion to Starship Troopers where it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, they're going to be, like they they finally made it together. There's still now our movie left. <laughs> Oh, that relationship's not gonna last. Yeah, Although, because it can't be happy. Because with the, I mean, it's, it's 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 there's a reason that Hollywood films end with the big kiss. It's because mm-hmm. if the big kiss came in the middle, then you can't do out for the next hour. Yeah. So because the two side characters get together, like their plot arc has to at that point from then on either end there because if it's carrying on, one of them's dying. Yeah, yeah. Although I cared about the characters in Starship Troopers. Yeah. I don't care about <laughs> Shaggy and and Forbes. Um, I mean, they give a bit of life to the movie. Like they they seem to be actually having fun. Like the actors no, seem to be like the, enjoying the themselves. Thing. It's not just them that seem to be having fun. There seems to be a genuine effort in this. Uh, I would argue, like they've really, really tried. Like it wears a tart and sleeve. It genuinely thought, I think, that it was going to be like a competitor to Star Wars. Mm. It's put all loads of money into the sets. There's hired like some recognisable face I mean obviously Freddie Prince Jr is like who now but like at the time these guys were pretty big yeah um, yeah the, 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 the CG has aged surprisingly well yeah it's clunky in some points but mm. this was the 90s and uh, yeah it's it's held up like space battles you know are big in scale they're a bit shit yeah I mean I mean it knows how to use it budget like a, a, and a lot of the ships um and a lot of the just flying around ones, they have a lot of fucking close-ups. Like, there's a yeah. lot of times where it's just the face, which is, like, covers up, like, 80% of the screen. But, like, when it breaks out, you can see... Like, it's... It's it, it's all right, yeah. yeah. Like, the it's costumes not, are, like... You know, there's a lot yeah, of practical yeah, effects yeah. and that. Like, the costumes are, like... Outside of the stupid hats. It's... Yeah, it's... <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I, I like, like to sort of think... There, there are... Like, like, we're bitching at it, and, like, it, it's it's the worst sort of movie because it is kind of boring. But there is elements of good to it. It's the one... It's the one that I feel so far has had the most effort put into it, besides maybe mm. Street Fighter 2. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. I can agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Definitely is. Um... But there's some sort of mission now where all of the guys are going to, um, like, track down a uh, uh, kill Raffi ship. But plot twist! Taggett, Captain Taggett, is actually Commodore Taggett in Naval Intelligence. Yeah. That meant no to me when they say it. It still means no to us when you do. I, I, I don't. I don't. What's the revelation? He's, he was just pounding on the cover or some shit. I don't. But it doesn't change his allegiance. 
no, no, but he just now, really, I've just, now that we have, like, one competent member of the crew, because everybody else was just sort of flailing around, and now he's been like, yo, I'm Commodore, I report directly to Admiral Tolwyn, y'all are doing what I'm saying now, because I'm the only person that knows what the fuck's going on. And then, and then they just sort of be like, ah, cool, we'll go back to the ship then. Oh shit, cool referee attacking it, you were right! It's like, damn uh, fucking I right think, it was. I think that's, I, what, that's um, I think that's where it fucks up, it doesn't... Um, know how to to do to do good sci-fi, mm. like which is surprising because the Wing Commander series are, are kind of acclaimed for like the storytelling and stuff and the books and stuff. But like, it's very very like sci-fi is one of those genres. Like when it's gro- good, it's great. But when it's bad, it's real real troby. Mm. You got your techno babble, you got your military, you got your devoid of characters, and, and this falls into that camp. It's yeah. like it's it's like. If someone says to me, what's sci-fi? And, like, I just want to point at something. Like, I could do it for Wing Commander and be like, spaceships, um, military, uh, aliens. Yeah. Protect Earth. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, there's so much more to sci-fi than that. Um, you know, like, it's it's a, it's a, it's yeah. a culture ritual with, with allegory. But this kind of just doesn't have yeah. it. The, the next scene is obviously that all the ships like run down and we get to see the target ship being attacked by the Kilrafi and it's really boring because yeah. it's like it's a it is Even it's just fast, a it's, it's just a it's submarine so... fight like oh, they, they why like there is nothing in this they are not making use of the space element of this in any way there is a fair fair bit every now and then when yeah, but it's like, like not here yeah not here because there's like the same words like oh get the torpedo room fucking done and <laughs> and the, they oh, they can only fire like one or two at a time it's just boat naval combat it, do, it doesn't it doesn't help without um, sea like it, for fuck's it, sake it didn't help me personally that I find naval combat to be the dullest thing in the world no, uh, I can, there's I can literally sort of only that. one example of a film where I've ever been interested in any mm. form of naval combat yeah. and that's Captain Phillips oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah other than yeah. that I hate it like Hunt for Red, Red October mm. often considered a classic yeah. I just I, it's dull to me yeah. um, so for me in particular this was real yeah. Yeah. but then but crap. then it slightly changes you know there's a quick there's a, there's a, qu- there's a quick change because Devereaux's wing and stuff all come back and now it's Top Gear Top, yeah. top Gun. Top Gun. <laughs> top Gun. Jeremy top Clarkson's just fucking flying about. So it starts, you know, in the sort of um, naval battle in space, and now it's a dogfight in space. Um, uh, but it's, they win. Spoilers. Um, yeah. <laughs> don't want stuff. I need to stop saying that. Anyway, um, Shaggy and uh, Forbes, after, after this... Um, this is where they have the little bit of a show-off. They, they ignore a direct order to return to the ship. And you know this isn't ending well. <laughs> Yep. Um, like they they have a bit of a show off of just like oh, oh I can I can I can blow these up. It's one of those moments can. where I wish the characters were aware of the tropes of Alan John. Yeah, because like if they'd been if they'd been you know oh we should totally defy orders and go do 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 this big you know dangerous competition and then like one of them went we just shagged like let's let's yeah yeah, yeah yeah like, I, would, I would love that. Because yeah, yeah, you're, you're gonna die, and then I'm, I'm, I can almost guarantee I'm gonna find out later you were pregnant. Like that's just <laughs> <laughs> almost definitely. But yeah, um, Shaggy takes down a Kilraffy ship like too close to them. It hits Forbes, and then they're they're coming in to land too this hard. This is actually and, uh, an interesting uh, plot point. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. How often do you see, you know, the the two? Like we'll say, likable leads. You know, two two big likable leads. You know, the romantic relationship, the 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 crux of the, the you know the the ones you're supposed to root for are those, those two lovebirds. You know, they're getting behind. How often do you see in like an adventure with a love story, the hero causes the death of his girlfriend and has to spend the next hour of the movie dealing with that? Well. Not not often, I will admit. I mean, I mean, it happens, but it's yeah. not often. And no. it's, I mean, it I mean, Wing Commander doesn't do that because it, it, well, it attempts it. It's like there's one scene. Yeah, that's there's, the there's one scene. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a good plot point. It's not handled well, yeah, but it yeah, is a good yeah. plot point. It's yeah. genuine because there's that bit where yeah, there's that one scene. So yeah, basically, uh, point is 
Um, Shaggy fucks up her ship because he's being a bit of a douche and showing off. Yeah. She can't land it, crashes, dies. Um, it's, it's a fucking hilarious bit. Hilarious bit. Where, where, uh, where, where De- Devereaux's, uh, well, you know, Shaggy's freaking out. Just, ah, get a medic, get a medic. Oh, I'm yeah, yeah, freaking yeah. out as well. And Freddy just fucking tackles her. <laughs> Boom! You <laughs> are rugby's under yeah. the ground, Lee. And then, uh, Devereaux's just, Get that wreckage off the. Um, get that wreckage off my ship. Like, ah, this that we need to creased. land. The first time I saw this, I was yeah. absolutely creased because um, it's just the like because obviously she's in the ship and you know it's not like it's not like like compare this to Starship Troopers, right? Starship Troopers has the death scene and yeah. they put her, they put her in the coffin, yeah, and they send the coffin out of space and it's mm. you know it's real slow and real like romantic. It's like it's, almost romantic. Yeah, like, this image of like it's it's a beautiful death. It's and it's then a, this it's, a fucking, <laughs> it's just like she's in the ship and it's like wrecked on the like thing and her boyfriend screaming at the side. It's just what can only be described as a space road sweeper. <laughs> <laughs> just like slowly but surely beep 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 and just pushes off the edge just like dramatic music plays <laughs> it is in it's, stitches oh it's hilarious so funny just dumps her off the side of the deck it's literally like uh, funk yeah. as well. like, it's like yeah. no grace uh, no tact it's unfortunate though that like it, like you say it's a good plot point but it's been handled really poorly especially, yeah. especially with Forbes character actually in in um in watching this movie I came across a um uh, a um, a sort of a, a test for like um, women on 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 screen in media, and this one's called the sexy lamp test. And I didn't the sexy the lamp sexy test. lamp test. And it I says like that. I, I don't a, know what it is. Yeah, but I fe- like the sound of it. It says the test is a female character that cannot be removed from the plot and replaced with a sexy lamp without destroying the story. And Forbes just yeah, you that could, is such a good test. You could just you could just replace Forbes with a sexy lamp, and the movie's the same. I did, I, 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 which one's Forbes? Forbes the, the one that just dies. Just dies. Like, ah, no, she just pilots space things and saves the day. And but but the, but she she does exist just to sort of die to raise the stakes a little bit. Like she has she has she has an alright character. Like we said before, like she, there's some good banter and stuff between between her and uh, Shaggy, and there are some enjoyable scenes with her. But she doesn't really have a character outside of she's there to be a love interest yeah, yeah, yeah. and then to die. Yeah. So she's a sexy lamp. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sorry like I just wanted to bring this test up because I'm I like so that. happy that I found it I do, I do like that <laughs> just looking forward to the edits that one of us are going to have to make now a sexy fucking lamb yeah. rule 34 of the internet will probably already exist uh, that I've seen a sexy that. L'Oreal bottle before so really? like, yeah. oh wow okay I'll have to... now I've got to find it of course because I've just mentioned <laughs> it so I've got to put it up on the fucking edit why do we keep talking <laughs> about these things damn it Ah, so, De- Devro nearly kills Shaggy. Seppuku, and then, <laughs> and then yeah, no, like that, that's interesting. Like, well, it's a shame they don't keep up with that because that's genuinely interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's like, you know, because he's happy go lucky, cocky, and then his cockiness just fucking kills like his newfound love, and he's mm-hmm. geared. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, I should stop being a twat. Like, yeah, yeah. this is a real reality check for me. Like, that's an arc. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then the dawn. Yeah, the if, he, if he had a like drastic character change right now, it'd really, it'd really like hammer home how serious and everything it was. Um, and he doesn't, 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 doesn't happen. Uh, uh, they're, they're, they're still, they're still hiding from the Kilrafi um, fleet. Um, it's more just dossing about again. Like after yeah. that, you get like that's the thing. It has like a climactic action scene and then just dossing about. Yeah, but but there's a wonderful scene where they're like hiding on a planet and there's like a Kilrafi destroyer or something bombing the planet and the ship gets like hit. And you know the screen, the camera bloody shakes, but just everybody just prophetically just like gently falls oh, to the ground. <laughs> nothing beats early in the movie though. What we missed when they go through the warp and Shaggy looks like he's on a roller coaster. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's the best yeah. thing ever. We'll put that up here as well. Now we did miss that, but oh god, uh, shit happens. Number oh, twenty. Yeah. There's a dam- yeah. damage in the hole and he gets up that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, Bre- you know, that, a very yeah. spacey trope. Yeah, bridging, uh, bridging hilariously oh, yeah. lacking in tension again, mm-hmm. like all the action scenes are. Because he's like getting sucked out, and the dude's just watching him. It's racist, McRacist guy. He's well, no, no, no. This him. is this is the second guy. This is dude. Oh, yeah, num- no, this is dude number is, seven. Oh, yeah, sorry, my mistake. He, he doesn't like him though. Doesn't yeah, he? no, this yeah. guy's also racist. And then Shaggy's just like, "You're not going to help him," and I'm like, "Well, you're standing there, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking now, Shaggy, he's your, he's your best mate." And then Shaggy's like, after about five minutes, "Fine, I'll help him." <laughs> And then he slowly, slowly 
walks to grab a rope just like he's just friggin like taking his time as his friends like out there dying nearly and it's just where's the urgency in this movie like it's 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 everything about it doesn't have urgency because the journey's really really long yeah and then everything but all of the fast paced scenes take forever and go on and oh it's terrible even shots shots are too long like where it should cut like like just people walking a lot Mm. like you know what I mean where like you could just cut to the conversation just strange strange filmmaking it really is um yeah, it's it, it's just slow. It's a slog. Like it's it's really difficult to get through. And and yeah, like I say, not for any. There are good elements to this. This should have been an easy sort of watch, but it just just sci-fi is space war movies that kind of like do themselves. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. It's like like it's high the... stakes action. Yeah, you just need decent characters. Like, yeah, really. it's like they're really messed and up the fundam- fundla- fundamentally with a. With, decent with, cameras and decent yeah, yeah. Uh, decent characters and decent directing. Yeah. Even, get even, you through a space even, even at this point, like even at this point where this movie was uh, was made, ninety um, seven, um, it, like the formula is there to be used like and several abused. Times over, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, uh, it's just uh, speaking of bad characters, we get some more bad character scenes. Blair's uh, sorry, Freddie goes up to Devro and it's just, hey, the not existent thing's stupid and stop being a dick to Shaggy. There you go. That's fine. And then he has a thought. Actually, yeah. If they play the whole like, let every time someone dies, they didn't exist. They never existed. Yeah. Why does she try to kill Shaggy and be like, "You friggin' dick!" Ah, I'm gonna hey. shoot you in the head. Because Shaggy should have turned around and went, "What for?" Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, like, yeah. and then she would have been like, "For killing shit." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> killing who? That's what I. Thought. Damn it! <laughs> oh, if only the script was smarter. <laughs> Damn it! Ah, oh, would have loved that to happen. Devro goes to Shaggy and is like, "Ah, oh, we're on. It's it's it, we're we're gearing up to the third act, here, mate. Uh, we're about to all go on our ships." It's like, "Ah, oh, I need you out there. You're one of my best pilots." Shaggy's like, "I'm not sure if I can." It's like, "Nah, you should. I'm ordering you." It's like, "Ah, all right." Then just sort of gets over that whole like confidence issue. It's just, yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm trying. Tra- like I want to imbue these with some sort of um, emotion, but like. It's, there's none. There's there. none. Even, even the acting, like the line delivery oh, yeah, for a lot yeah, of these, there's is some, there's some stellar acting. In yeah, it's sure. really bad. Fred, particularly from Freddy um, in the climactic scenes, like yeah. oh, 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 yeah, Oscar gold. Yeah. Beautiful. Actually, actually, hilarious part with uh, bloody Freddy that I love. Like, I know, I know, we're, we're a while into this now, and maybe I should have pointed out earlier, but just he just never closes his mouth. <laughs> Just shit. Just when you when shit, you, you might be right. He just he just can't act with I his didn't mouth even closed. Think of that. Just any time he's in I the back- kinda think, I kinda think he's in the background and just and just like acting but not saying anything. It's just mouth is just slightly ajar. It's just oh my god. I don't know why, but he's got the kind of um, just 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 try just keep looking for it, guys. He's got the kind of like <laughs> he's got the kind of like character where like. Like, you would know he was on level... Like, you could use him as a spirit level because he'd be drooling on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> oh, God. They, um... They assault a Kilraffi ship. Yeah, the one, like, the, and now we're in yeah, ten we're minutes into in the film. Finally. We see the villains. Yeah. They, they, they assault a Kilraffi ship, the one that they think has the space car battery in, and we finally got our first look at the Kilraffi and their yeah, um, proper, like, besides two frames in that spaceship. Yeah, they Which, like, I get the whole thing of, like, you know, like, Cloverfield did it, and, like, um, obviously the classic, like, monster movies did yeah, it. It's yeah. like, hate the monster. But hate the monster if it's going to be a, like, real, mm, so, yeah. so terrifying threat. You know, one entity. Or, you know, even if you're going to do a bit of a dramatic intro to them. Because the Kilrathi have been hyped up for an hour of this movie so far. You've never seen them apart from, like, a little two-frame glimpse. Yeah. And then they just kick down the door and you're like, oh, 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 there they are. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. There's no, like, build-up. There's no, like, yeah. shadows. The, the, like, peep around the corner. And, like, there's no, like, glazed reaction faces of, like, oh, my God. No, no, yeah, here. exactly. It's just, like, kick down the door. Oh, that's what they look like. Oh, yeah, okay. the f- the first proper look you get at the Kilraffi is one of them reacting to the heroes kicking down their door. Like that's not yeah. scary. Not it's s- one of them being like, "Ah, oh, shit, we're about to die." Like that's not, not for up, I do. Is this that? is certainly not yeah. like 
it's oh they're so ridiculous but yeah the Kilrafi look considerably different than they do in the games these are like I say they look like the leader of the Gorgonites um, Archer like, yeah. they, like that's what they look like to me they ugh, no fur like ugh. I, uh, I don't the know. action scene as well is like an action scene where Freddy like takes down them mm. and he literally just like there's no like frenetic movement or anything to it he just like shoots forward Turns around, turns around, shoots, shoots back, shoots back, turns, shoots forward. Yeah, yeah, it's just shoots back. It's, it's like uh, that for like four guys. Yeah, it's so shit. It's advanced civilization, my ass. Yeah, we oh, don't so know how to fun. work a corridor. Cover. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so dumb. Uh, they find the space car battery and like take the coordinates from it where the Kilrafi are going, but don't actually take the battery or destroy it. Or I don't even get that. If they're taking the like, coordinates what? from it, don't they know that they're going to Earth? Like what? What I don't I don't get yeah, what they're doing I at don't, this point. Like I don't. I th- Why do they need the navcom think... back? The navcom's just a map. I th- no, it's a jump coordinate. It's jump point. It? Yeah, that's what I was point. I think that's the point that like, like the they jump. need to know exactly where they're gonna show up. But I think like a good plan B would literally be like, are they gonna show up somewhere around here? Let's just put like like ships literally fucking everywhere they're literally racing them to earth like I think if rather than you know invade their ship and find um like some like the exact jump location just go to earth and be like yeah right I just get people surrounding all of it cause um there's gonna be some some cat bastards <laughs> uh oh by the way why why do they look like skinless uh, furless cats in this um uh, the director I believe just made that decision like i he, he, I mean, he, fair saw, he saw he saw how they looked on screen with fur and just just didn't think they looked intimidating enough i believe i think i read an interview with the director saying that it's a, it's a weird change like because it's 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 so iconic you yeah know what I mean? yeah like more than anything uh, like i mean at least for me but obviously i've got particular memories of it yeah more than anything i think wing commander i think oh one with the lion people or yeah, tiger yeah. people or catch people if you mm. will and then you see these and they look well sort of like cats but you know those weird naked more rat Siamese things like they look like that. I am I am just imagining Rufus from Kim Possible yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what I'm thinking of what, what am I thinking of the, the, I'll, I'll find a picture because I know that these, exist. these things yeah. these cats mm. it's, it's, it's oh, blatantly so not going to exist I'm no, just going to no, have no. to put up a picture of Rufus like but <laughs> yeah um, make it more <laughs> so they get back from the ship um, um, after taking the uh, the jump coordinates and the plan is uh, send a jo- drone for the jump point first meet up with Admiral Tolwyn let him know in the coordinates and blow the Kilfrafi fleet to high heaven but no drama the drone's oh, not working I just remember this this amazing and, bit of- and the ship that they're in is too big to fit through um uh, it's, the, it's too big uh, to get past the Kilrafi, so they'll need to send in a single fighter. But it'll be suicide. There's a thousand singularities in that quasar. Uh, who who could who could do it? If only there was some sort of space Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get the best fucking line. Well, one oh, of the best the, lines. They, in the area. It, again, yeah. connect knit the Star Wars. Yeah, Blair. Um, sorry, Freddy just doesn't believe in himself. He just doesn't believe he can do it. But but Scottish Taggart, <laughs> French Taggart says the line, "Faith has nothing to do with it. It's genetics." <laughs> Fuck believing in yourself, kids. You're special because of your dad and your mum. <laughs> Fucking there's Star Wars prequel for you. Yeah. What's literally. that? What's that? Oh, oh, do you want to get the Force? Nah, mate. Let's. Oh, I've seen you bit of chlorine can. Nah, yeah. sorry, sorry. But I really want to try. Nah, I can't be a Jedi. I did, what a message like I know. for the film to give because like they put like emotional inspirational music in yeah, yeah, yeah. behind it as well as if like oh now I get it yeah like I am shit <laughs> but it's okay because my dad and mum weren't like, <laughs> yeah it's so weird it's I mean like they try to save it with Tagger but if you believe you need yeah yeah faith. but if you believe you need face and then there's a twist reveal of like Taggart like being a pilgrim as well um, which, I don't get. I don't which, get. Why, like, which, why, why does that make him faith? Like I don't. I don't. Well, I think they're implying. But it's like it's just, it's, oh, the thing know. is as well. Like, oh, but if you believe you need faith, is such a condescending line. It's yeah, like, yeah. Oh well, 
I, as an atheist, am confident <laughs> there is no God. Yeah. But if you need that to get through life, that's fine. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Fuck off, Taggart. That is actually really. Uh, that is puns. That is that is actually really fucking accurate. I didn't think about that. That is yeah. so patronising. Yeah. But then Freddy's just like, yeah, <laughs> I can do it now. Okay, guys. Yeah. Um. Th- do we want to just? Well, you can yeah, literally just this, like yeah. some shit happens. Freddy beams through the portal. Oh, oh, oh no, no, no! Get, before we do get, yes. we do get. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Dev, um, Devro and Freddy are heading towards the portal, and Devro's like, "Ah, shit! The 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 fleet's gonna attack our ship before they go. I need to defend." And then like Devro's ship get injured, and Freddy's like, and Freddy has to go on without, and they just oh, they get the hilariously awkward hand against the glass. You have to go on without me. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's so, so horrendously cliche. Like, oh my God. Like, it's one of those cliches that's so cliche, you genuinely don't think the cliche actually exists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you think of it as being from parodies. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's, it's hand it's, against it's the almost glass. almost a bloody, it's almost a bloody parody. Oh, for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Never let go, Jack. <laughs> Um, yeah. Also like Titanic. Hey! <laughs> Man, uh, this is a barrage of entertainment. It, 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 uh, it's, uh, a menagerie of hey! cinema. <laughs> oh god. Um, so Blair just sort yeah, of, he, Blair he, just sort of makes a jump. Seems pretty easy, really. Don't know why, but he was banging on about it. Um, and yeah, just passes on the message. It's a really anticlimactic ending. Yeah, yeah. Because he passes on the message. And then they're like, like there's a bit of like thing of like, I won't take this message from. Is it is it the racist guy again? Where it's like, oh no no, 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 it's, no, it's, no, no, it's no, a racist this, guy. This, no, no, this is uh, this is back in the main fleet. So this is Adam and Tolwyn again near Earth. They don't want to take the message originally for some reason. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. They're, they're just like, oh, there's a guy like he's on a channel and he, he's saying, oh, oh, they're coming through at this this thing and like uh, we could go out and get him in if they want. And Tolwyn's just he literally gives nah. he literally gives the space equivalent of what's that. Yeah, call sent. I don't answer it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, so I uh, and um, so, but yeah, eventually he changes his mind. I guess. So yeah, he changes his mind, gets a message. Oh, sweet! I'll um, I'll see to that. And <laughs> all of the Kilrathi have to come through the jump point one by one. So they literally just wait in front of the portal and blow them up yeah. the second they come out. Yeah. And it said, "Oh, they're coming through too fast to stop." And also too soon to and dying too soon to warn the ship behind them. Mm. So this is just going to keep going. And then like the film just kind of carries on, and just in the background, there's just thousands of dying Kilrathi, like just a ship just blown up, like as like people are having conversations. There's just a portal that like as it's in, like exiting, just getting blown up each time as as people are just having a just chat. It's just terrible, like uh, just so anticlimactic and weird. Like it makes no sense. Like why you would option for this? I, I, mean, I do love. I do love though. Like this is what I mean. Like you can tell the put. Like it's it's cheese and it's pure sci-fi rubbish. But they gave the Kilrathi that own language subtitles and yeah. then subtitle over those subtitles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's. Uh, I mean, the only other real thing of note, I think, at the end is just like Blair. Uh, Freddy like I don't know runs out of fuel or some shit and then gets rescued by the director of the movie there's Chris there's Chris Roberts me he's already in it the main character is him <laughs> well oh my god the other guy is holy shit well. not only did he cast not only did he write the sci-fi epic in which he was the main character yeah. he then had himself save the main character oh shit <laughs> yeah yeah wow Chris come on man uh, <laughs> chill your bean mate uh yeah, they save the world. Um, Taggart finds Devro because, you know, Devro's ship was injured and just floating out in space. Like, Taggart's like, ah, I gotta find her. Uh, it's just a kind of a steady slog to nothing. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just sort of like, your parents would have been proud, all that cliche, hugs from the heroes. You get the big kiss from those people that shared no chemistry. Yeah. And, and then just, the credits. Just lit, yeah, just fed up credits. And then that's the movie. <laughs> What? what? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, in the credits as well. Voice of Merlin. Yeah. Question mark. Question mark. Who was it? You ask. Mark fucking Hamill. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah. They had Mark Hamill. Why? Like, they, 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 it's literally Mark Hamill. 
went into a film where a character previously played by Mark Hamill was going to be the main lead yeah. and didn't get the part yeah, over yeah. Freddie Prince Jr. I could understand if he wasn't available. Yeah. I could understand if they didn't want to cast him mm. a little bit. But they got him in. Yeah. If I... I like for, for, really shitty little cameo yeah, where not, just not, over yeah. the radio you hear his voice it doesn't even sound like him because it's like got this weird UI robotic overdub so it's just ugh. it's ugh so anyway what do you think of the movie um oh god uh let's let's try and take this sort of piece by piece here um you know it's a space you know it's a space uh epic it's epic so um a lot of what you're gonna get out of enjoyment in these sort of movies are the characters the story is kind of inconsequential generally you generally follow the the, the battles unless it's like highly allegorical yeah, yeah, like, yeah. but, but this, this, isn't. this isn't so typically enjoyment in these sort of movies you'd get characters uh, and battles typically they're the two they're yeah. the two big okay oh, battles sense of adventure maybe. yeah maybe maybe the sort of catharsis of having fun like yeah, overall yeah. so I'll, I'll, I'll tackle those three you know first we have the battles borderline incomprehensible <laughs> like right. they lack drama they lack urgency they lack tension just basic film grammar yeah basic really. basic filmmaking 101 like absolutely incomprehensible uh, incomprehensible mess much like my pronunciation of the, those two words yeah. <laughs> characters um the the dialogue is predominantly laughably poorly written mm-hmm. um which are then predominantly laughably um, poorly acted yeah um there's a few exceptions every here and the, here and there like we said every so often there's a scene where like some of the characters look like they're having fun you can sort of get behind yeah, them yeah. sort of enjoy yourself a bit but then you'll then some clunk will fucking come along and you just just will completely take you out of any immersion so on the whole fucking terrible um going back to the battles actually cheesy ass special special effects every every um every now and again yeah. I think generally, um, for, generally the, for the standard of when it was generally used, on the whole but then things. like there's every once in a while like once you actually do see the Karafi immediately you take your out because they look ridiculous um, and, and move very like robotically yeah, yeah. as well and then you get the actual scenes that aren't which are combat but not in ships like the terrible bloody gun scenes with Freddy killing like four kill Raffi oh, which hilarious. is just like kill spin kill spin kill it's ugh so bad and then you get the sort of catharsis element of this which is just is it fun? I perf- I perfectly um, summarise it as like, the first time I saw, you know, the first time you see a movie, do you notice the plot holes? If you don't, you're having too much fun to notice them. Like, that's the catharsis yeah, yeah, element. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I think the, the one that I always point to is sort of Inception, um, where there's a lot of Inception that when you really think about it, sort of doesn't make that's it huge, huge amount of sense. But, 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 yeah, sense. yeah, but... If you're watching it and you're having a load of fun, you're not thinking about yeah, that. Yeah, because Nolan's yeah, that's color. that's yeah, that's the catharsis element. That is that's the the sort sort of the catharsis challenge, as I see it, the, the apparent double C. As I've just dubbed it. Um, this doesn't have that. Like I was like like there was no point through this where I was having so much fun. I wasn't like looking at things and me like, well, that's stupid. I well, didn't that's know what was dumb. going on. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's also it's problem. really hard to follow. Yeah. Like, and I say this as a man who like has read quite heavy sci-fi like mm. i can follow like i'm not talking you know starship trooper space star wars i'm talking like like it's like uh, 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 like june you know what i mean like, oh yeah, yeah stuff like that you know what i mean like not massively hugely heavy sci-fi but the kind of sci-fi that's like hard sci-fi and it's you know, i could follow that but this this has struggled and um, i'm not sure if it was because it was in uninteresting or incoherent um, more Definitely. than anything, my my thoughts on the film is, what's the point? Because every film so far, while well, been you know some of them been particularly bad, there was a point to them, um, and that was either to be a sequel to an already successful film, yes, or to adapt a successful video game series so that fans could see, admittedly, some oh, obviously the failed, a live action version of that, yeah. The Wing Commander games already were live action yeah, films. Yeah, like, well, well, yeah, to a degree. Like they had I, the FMV elements. I, yeah, and they were long and lengthy and mm. had a lot of money put in. I, well, I, I don't get it. I, what's the point? 
Yeah, it doesn't. It like there's no need for it to exist as a movie, and there's no need for it to exist as a video game adaptation because the like the video games themselves are already like as like it's like making it, a film yeah. adaptation of Heavy Rain. Yeah, you know, there's there's always the well, yeah, exactly. In fact, there's always the um. Uh, well, in case you guys aren't aware, there's the element, there's the there's the train of thought online that you can't ever make a good video game adaptation, like as a movie, because you're inherently taking away something fundamental from a video game while making it a movie. Like yeah, you're yeah, taking of part of the first first person sort of idea. This movie might be the epitome of that um, thought line of thought because when you're sitting down to play the games, you're getting all of the action. You're getting to play the. Um, the you know the fighter jet sequences but then you're getting to watch the movie in between yeah you are literally taking away the bit of well arguably obviously the story and stuff but you're taking away the gameplay like from the game in in a way that is like completely different to every other one like because mm-hmm. you've still got the story like because this could literally just be the cutscenes yeah yeah like from... if 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 you edited this sort of enough you could have like all of all of take out all the fight sequences stick them in you know like I, I don't know what just, the, the I was going to yeah, yeah, recreate yeah, yeah. them in the video game Re- recreate them in like I don't know Unity um, and and then have all of the cutscenes between them J- but just you know maybe all you have to do is re, re- slightly retool them so that the characters are looking at the camera um, and then you've got the movie as the game and you've probably made it infinitely better because you get mm-hmm. to play uh, it's it's. Um, I agree yeah, this no, has no point to well, exist what's the point um, who's it for because it's like Wing Command is a multimedia franchise you know there's books there's yeah, games yeah. there's like a lot of stuff and obviously there's, there's this film but uh, the film I, I just don't get like who's it for um, because like as far as a general audience go the, you know space war films outside of Star Wars aren't really big and you ain't taking on Star Wars you know yeah, I mean? yeah, like, you know, that's, that ain't happening so you ain't touching that there's no general audience thing the fans, well, generally it's only fans who ask for live adapt- action adaptations of their games, but yeah. they already had it in the games, so I have no idea who it's for. No. I have no idea why it exists. It's 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 probably going to be, I would say, the biggest anomaly we'll come across on this Maybe, like, entire yeah, yeah. list, I would think, um, because I can, even some of the really obscure stuff, I can think of a justifiable reason as to why it exists, even if it is terrible. Yeah. But this, I just... I don't fathom it. The only thing I can think is um, the really wanted to push it is like Wing Commander is going to be this huge media empire, but that's just pure delusional. Yeah. If you yeah. thought that was going to happen to it, to it, it doesn't have huge, massive mainstream appeal. Not, not this kind of film. No, no, definitely not. With this kind of like heaviness to it. So, aye, there's, yeah. there's our closing sentiments on it. I suppose we get get to the list now. Um, aye. Um, so, where, where, where are you thinking? Where are you thinking of ranking this? Um, we've oh, already spoiled uh, that we're not right at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, it's not right at the bottom because no. nothing's going to beat Mortal Kombat Annihilation for a while. Mm. Um, it's still sore, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah. Still, still, so long after watching Annihilation, still not quite sure... Like if it's hurt, yeah, if it's hurt me one. as much as like I'm, st- I'm not ready to demote Mortal Kombat from my top spot, but I'm fucking can on the fence. Can you continue to say that <laughs> just to save you, so that I don't have to re-edit the uh, uh, no, leaderboard Dan, as no. much? I'm not a sellout like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but no, Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat. So I mean, you could argue like, <laughs> Wing Commander um, had that little bit of a. Uh, tragedy to it but not uh, with um, the way my brother didn't let us play the sudden <laughs> <Aww>. game <laughs> do you know what he did for Mario Party as well Mario Party Mario Party he wanted us to get a different game I think um, we were in Toys R Us at the time and I wanted Mario Party and he wanted something else I don't know like Shadow Man or something which is to be fair a pretty good game mm. but it might not have been that and uh, I remember I really wanted Mario Party. I'm a little kid, love Mario. I'm looking at Mario Party. This is totally unrelated to anything, by the way, but this is really cathartic for me. Um, Get that, <laughs> we're, we're, so, we're here to be your therapist. <laughs> so I pick up Mario Party and I've got my birthday money. Oh, you, do, you don't want that. You don't want that. And well, why? It's like, oh, it's not like a real Mario game. And I'm like, so I look at the back and I'm like, does kind of not look like a proper Mario game. Because yeah. um, at the time, I've only got like Mario 64, Mario Brothers to go yeah, off. Yeah. He's like, I was like, but it's a Mar- but it's still a Mario game. You still do stuff. No, no, it's it, honestly, it, it's like it's like you play chess and things. I'm like, I'm thinking, 
I don't know how to play chess. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. <laughs> and I'm like, eight-year-old me is thinking, like, again, it's really specific that they made a Mario chess game. <laughs> He's fooled us so many times, god damn it. And it's only just dawned on us how much he's had us going with the bloody watch and a wing commander. So this is sort us a little bit, but not anywhere near as much as Mortal Kombat Annihilation. So, um, I'm not going to let that colour me, me rankings, although I did with Mortal Kombat, but I do still think Mortal Kombat Annihilation would no, be no, above no, regardless. I, well, I mean, I agree, because <laughs> I didn't have that and I still ranked so it. So, I put it above Annihilation. Yep. Yeah, going from the bottom up, between super above Super Mario Brothers, below Street Fighter. Yeah, because it's um yeah obviously you know you've got your Street Fighter two and obviously below good Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because that's just that's just top. It's not even um, touching that. Yeah. yeah. Um, just because um, my logic is it's not as bad as Annihilation by a long stretch. It's not mm. as bad as Double Dragon and Mario Brothers because they were like bad movies made by people who sort of weren't trying it feels like yeah a little bit whereas this feels like the tried and there's moments where that kind of comes through and it's the one that looks most like a film like Double Dragon looks like the set's being made by like kids in nursery with like Crayola (laughs) and a couple of blank walls yeah yeah. and um, Mario Brothers just looks like um, someone skinned a really fat dude and like put all of his flesh all over the city Mm. whereas this actually looks right it looks like a film it feels like a film it just misses the mark of being a film but it's it's filmy yeah, it gets close um it had that opening where street fighter while it misses the mark monumentally it at least accidentally ended up being good in ways whereas i didn't you know this does this doesn't have enough enough fun where Street Fighter kind of had accidental fun. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's my that. rankings. But I do, I do agree with what, yeah, with what you, the general sentiments you, you were there. Certainly not, certainly not worse than Annihilation because as I, as I stated and as I still hold hold true, that film is irredeemable. Um, yeah. Not worse than Double Dragon or Super Mario Brothers. It, this it, this movie is it's not well put together, but it's well enough put together to put they it were, over they were those two. Yeah. put together. They were like slap dashed. But then it's not. It's not over Street Fighter because yeah, it's not fun. Yeah, it's just not fun. There's, well, there's very little elements of catharsis to this movie, and the very small, brief elements of catharsis that were in Street Fighter, taking away um, uh, M. Bison's performance, which was just entirely fun all the while, and Zangief. Um, yeah, the fact I can say those two with a smile on my face, that's yeah, why I put yeah, Street yeah. Fighter above this. Yeah, so, yeah. boom, that's, that's where it is in the rankings. So we're now moving on to... Well, uh, in the same year? Yeah, in the same year, 99. Uh... <laughs> well, this this one's going to come with a disclaimer. Actually, here, yeah, yeah because point. we are moving on to the very first in probably I would say the most successful video game adaptation franchise. Yeah, don't know if off the top of my well, off the top of my head, but one of them, if not the yeah. one, yeah. Um, the absolute massive uh, phenomenon that is Pokemon the first movie. Yep. Now the problem is, if we continue reviewing Pokemon movies, there's 10 million of the fuckers, oh, because God, they're released yeah. two every year now. So, we have decided, I'll just put it out there now so you don't question it later, um, we've decided to make the executive decision mm. to do what we call the Warner Brothers trilogy. Yes. Uh, the first three Pokemon movies that all got theatrical releases in the UK and were put out by Mona Brothers before the rights went over to Miramax who have thus put out all of the uh, UK releases of every Pokemon film thereafter because sorry as much as we love to be completionists we don't want to do Pokemon movies for the rest of our lives oh, God, there's other can... video game movies although saying that when we get to shit like Alone in the Dark I imagine we'll be like oh I wish we'd done the Pokemon movies yeah, we might I wish we'd done that. the Pokemon movies so um, yeah. allow us to leave you now before we'll see you next time when we revisit probably something well I would say it was very close to my childhood yeah I think every kid who yeah. grew up at our age has had a big Pokemon time yeah yeah so many hours yeah 
So it's something that was sort of very fundamentally close to our, both our childhoods. If mm. this was the one where we're both going in blind, this is the one where we're both going in completely hot on the subject. Yeah. Pokemon, the first movie. Mewtwo Strikes Back. Oh yeah, I forgot to add the tagline. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure we can both agree it is definitely the best film to ever have Strikes Back in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll find out, won't we? When we, we certainly yeah, will. When we see you next time. <laughs> see you then, guys. Ta-ta for now.